Saints lose to the Vikings 27-19, as is customary. After the Saints game, I take Drew to the mall to walk around. Where are we going? The mall. Going to the mall. What are we going to do? Pee. And he's, what, are, what are we going to do? Ride the elevators. We're going to go ride the elevators. And you know what? Riding the elevators at the mall on a Sunday with my son will uh, make up for uh, all the bad vibes that I have right now. It'll even make up for the moron in front of me right now who stopped at a green light. I want to drag him out of his car and shove his face in the dirt because he's a moron. Such is our lot in life as the fans of an awful football team that's poorly managed, poorly coached, with no on-field leadership, that's consistently made bad personnel decisions. You take one step forward and two steps back. Just when you feel good about winning a couple of games, getting above 500, you're going on the road to Minnesota to play a Vikings team who lost their franchise quarterback and are going to be playing against a guy by the way, Minnesota without their best receiver in Justin Jefferson, without their quarterback in Kirk Cousins, and you're going on the road to Minnesota, and you know what you do. And by the way, that limited Minnesota offense has to go against your vaunted Saints defense, right? Because Dennis Allen, the defensive this, guru, look at this. strength of the Saints team, look at this. and you know what you do? You look freaking Josh Dobbs bitch slap you for 21 points in the second quarter, and you're down 24 to three at half because you suck, because your friggin' defense, which decides they're going to play like world beaters in the second half, can't get off the bus in the first half, and this has been consistent. Everybody keeps talking about this great Saints defense, and I've been telling you this for a month now. Go back to the Jacksonville game. They ain't worth a shit in the first half. Really ain't worth a shit overall. You dug yourself a deep hole. And Derek Carr, who, by the way, if you follow me on Twitter, you now know, shall be known heretofore as the Empty Yards Emperor. Or the Emperor of Empty Yards. I think that's what we're going with. I forgot exactly how I tweeted it. Uh, on a very human level, I sincerely hope Derek Carr is okay. Uh, he was concussed, hurt his shoulder on the big hit by Daniil Hunter. It was actually two LSU guys. Jaquel and Roy went low, and Daniil Hunter went high, and they, they kaboomed him. And I, I sincerely hope on a human level he's okay. Now, with that aside, back to the football part of this, the emperor of empty yards sucks. And it's about time that everyone who's still holding out hope that he might be worth a damn realizes that you just set a match to $150 million. And even though I tried to tell you all this, some of you didn't want to friggin' hear it when the Saints decided not to draft a quarterback and instead to pay Derek Carr. And I told you they were paying Andy Dalton 2.0 $150 million. That's not fair. Bull crap. Bullshit, excuse me. It's all perception. You think Derek Carr is better than Andy Dalton. He ain't. They're the same player. They were drafted by their team, made him their franchise, was the starting quarterback there for nine years. Stats were almost identical. I told you this. I told you this when I signed him. Stats were almost identical. The team that drafted him, made him their franchise, decided you ain't never going to take us anywhere more than where you've taken us. You have a glass ceiling that's sitting right there, and it's a low ceiling, and we're moving on. And the people that knew him best moved on, and you are so stupid and gullible that you decided to pay Derek Carr $150 million, and now you have an albatross around your neck for three years with Derek freaking Carr. By the way, your $150 million quarterback, the emperor of empty yards, had 63 passing yards in the first half. 63 passing yards in the first half. Let me say that again. This ain't this isn't 1917, right? This isn't Curly Lambeau or Newt Rockney. This is 2023 when the NFL and all of football is geared toward offense and the forward pass, and you paid a quarterback $150 million and an entire half of football throwing to the likes of Chris Olave. You got Taysom Hill out there, Alvin Kamara, A.T. Perry making his debut, Jawan Johnson, Foster Morrow, name it. 63 yards in the first half. 
Is anybody still on board with Derek Carr? And this ain't even about Jameis. I'll get there. This ain't even about Jameis. Is anybody still on board with Derek Carr as being able to do any damn thing of significance? Please help me out if there's something I'm missing. Or is basically everything I try to tell y'all when they dumped $150 million into that bum of a football player coming to light? That's what I thought. Sincerely hope Derek Carr is okay, though. So then here comes Jameis. And just like that, bing, bang, boom, you got some life offensively because Jameis is a good physical athlete. It's the reason he was number one overall. The talent is tantalizing. And he threw two beautiful touchdown passes where he gave his receiver a chance to make a play, and they rewarded him. Once it was Alave, the other time it was A.T. Perry. But Jameis also threw two interceptions and had a third that came off the board. It was a miracle. But still, that's Jameis. He's going to make the play to wow you, and people are tantalized because the good looks really good. But the bad is also undeniable. And I'm sure that goober who does the Twitter account, the Jameis 101 guy, is going to be out here explaining how Jameis Winston is basically a combination of Tom Brady and Joe Montana, and we just don't get it. But at this point, it's what it is. Look, I was good with taking a flyer on Jameis a few years ago. I wanted him to do it. 26 years old, former number one overall pick. Let him sit behind Drew Brees. See if you can make something out of him. Guess what? You can't. You can't. He's a backup. He's a backup quarterback. He ain't, he ain't nobody's franchise. And the Saints screwed up, bro. They screwed up. Told y'all at the draft, I am more optimistic if I'm a Carolina Panther fan today than a New Orleans Saints fan. Some of y'all still crap on me for that. Because I get it. The Panthers suck. But you know what? They're start, they drafted their franchise. They're starting a rookie. And they're taking their lumps. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to build around them. The same way the Bengals built around Joe Burrow. The same way the Indianapolis Colts back in 1998 built around Peyton Manning. We just had a record for the number of interceptions in a season. But you know what? They had their guy. They invested in him. They believed in him. They built around him, and they won. You ain't winning with Derek Carr. And ain't to say you're guaranteed to win with a rookie draft pick. There's plenty of them that bust. But you know what you're not doing ever? Winning with Derek Carr. You know what you could do? Win with a draft pick. So the lesson New Orleans Saints is swallow your damn pride. You already sent a match to Mrs. Benson's $150 million with Derek Carr. Go draft a quarterback. And maybe you draft C.J. Stroud. Maybe. Maybe you draft Will Levis. Maybe you draft Brock Purdy. I don't know. Maybe you draft Mitchell Trubisky. But you won't know until you do it. And the Saints haven't drafted a quarterback in round one since Archie Manning. You ever going to make up your mind that you want to be great? Or you just going to be a bullshit franchise that wallows in your own fucking misery for your entire existence? Freaking Minnesota Vikings with Joshua Dobbs. Don't worry, my son doesn't know what I'm saying. I don't think I'm unfit because he's sitting right there. He doesn't know what I'm saying. He's barking like a dog. Who, who makes that sound? Who says that? Dude, what else did Duke say? Duke. Duke's the dog at the park that we go see and feed treats. Duke pants and barks and Drew loves him. See? Told you that would bring you more levity than the Saints. Your defense sucked in the first half. Got it together in the second half. Jameis tried to lead you on a couple drives. Too many turnovers. Too many problems. At least Blake Groupie made a kick today. You're too penalized. You're too stupid. How about how about you got a wide receiver? How about you got a wide receiver, lot a wide receiver lining up offside. Fully a wide receiver. Let me say this again: a wide receiver lining up a full yard offsides. Like, have you not played football, Cat Daddy? Do you not realize that you got to be behind the ball? You're a stupid team. You're a poorly coached team. You're an undisciplined team. You're an unmotivated team. You're a team that lacks talent. You're the oldest team in the NFL. You're going nowhere. This is what this is the lot in life of a bad football team. It's one step forward, 
two steps back. You think they put it together because they won back-to-back games and got above 500? Great. You beat Bears, and now you're going to Minnesota, and you're going to play Joshua Dobbs, and you win that game, and you're two, and you're two games over 500 going into your bye, and then you come off the bye, and you get to play Atlanta, who just benched their quarterback. And, man, you're, this is your opportunity to put it together. And you know what you do? You go to Minnesota, and you get outgained by Joshua Dobbs by 100 yards. Joshua Dobbs outgained you by 100 yards today. A guy that's been with that franchise for 10 days outgained you by 100 yards today, put up 24 points in the first half on your vaunted defense, and you got your ass kicked. Such is the lot in life of an awful football team, and that's what the New Orleans Saints are. You're going to win just enough probably to not get Dennis Allen fired, and you're going to have the same bullshit existence next year as well. I'm so friggin' sick of it. I'm so freaking sick of it. I hope Mrs. Benson has a pair and fires Dennis Allen this offseason and blows out Mickey Loomis. Thank them for all they did for this organization and Mickey and helping lead the Saints to the first ever Super Bowl championship for this organization. And Dennis Allen for being a good defensive coordinator who got things back in line after the Rob Ryan experiment went solely and horribly wrong. But understand what this is. It's what I've said for so long now. You've got a lieutenant as a head coach. You paid Andy Dalton $2.0, $150 million. You got a GM that's consistently chasing what was instead of looking forward to what could be. And as a result, you are where you are. You just gave up 380 to Josh Dobbs and lost an opportunity to go two games over 500 and have a firm grip on the worst fucking division in football, and instead, you lose, Tampa wins, and now all of a sudden, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are right there with you. Freaking New Orleans Saints, man. The freaking New Orleans Saints. Smash the like button if you agree. Leave comments, subscribe up to the channel, and all that stuff. I'm going to walk around the mall with my son. Have a great Sunday.